So we're 30 seconds before we're on air, so I'm letting the people in. Nice. So good day, everyone. As far as I can see, we are already on air on Facebook. So I'm really happy to welcome you on our today's uh, opening of the virtual exhibition by Marina Gropel. Marina, please raise your hand. Hi, everyone. Yeah, and we are so we are so inspired by this exhibition, which we are held in here uh, today. And I would like to introduce Grigori, uh, who is also here in the room. He will be your virtual host for today. Uh, and as of myself, I'm Anastasia Lebova, CEO and co-founder of the VR platform, which has, uh, which is so proud to host uh, Marina's personal uh, personal exhibition on our mobile application and soon to be released on our web version as well. So, so as not to take more of your time, Grigori, the floor is yours. Please Thanks very much, yourself. Anastasia. Um, and yes, I have to say personally, uh, extend my congratulations to Marina for her exhibition. I've already had the pleasure of visiting it and having a sneak peek as a member of the VR team. And uh, I love the experience and um, I'm excited to uh, introduce the uh, exhibition to you today and hopefully our uh, audience today and the rest of the viewers of the, uh, at the VR app will enjoy it too. I'm sure they will. Um, and before I give the word to Marina so she can tell us more about her exhibition, I'd just like to um, note the kind of amazing potential that technology brings us uh, and the capacity that endows us with to unite audiences worldwide. Um, physical exhibitions have uh, their own benefits, uh, but online we're able to unite a community internationally. And I think that this is an amazing opportunity for everyone and for Marina too. So without further ado, Marina, would you like to tell us more about yourself and the and this exhibition? Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, so hi, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to have you all here today um, watching live on Facebook or also here in, in the Zoom call. So I'm happy to have you all here today. Um, yeah, my name is Marina Gruppel. Uh, my artist name is Noisy But Purple. And I'm a Zurich-based new media and street artist. And what makes my um, art so much fun is that it's always closely to connected to um, technologies such as NFC, NFT, augmented reality, virtual reality, as we also see uh, yeah, today. And yeah, also others. and. Yeah, my art is all about exploring the possibility of, of technology and how it could make our lives better. And that's also what the exhibition is that also we're presented, uh, we're representing, yeah. Thanks very much, Marina. Um, uh, and if that's all that you uh, would like to say to us before we view the tour with live commentary, then why don't we show the, uh, the exhibition and uh, the rest of our audience will have the opportunity to hear Marina uh, comment on it live, which I am personally very excited for. Perfect. Sounds yeah, good. So, uh, now we will uh, share the screen with the exhibition. Uh, please uh, take a look at it when it will be on air. It will be just in 15 minutes when Marina will finish the virtual tour. So now we will have kind of a sneak peek of how it looks like. And Marina, please feel free to stop me and comment on each artwork which you, which you see. So uh, when it comes to the functionality, uh, so now you have to download the VRT app to get the experience of the exhibition. The link, uh, direct link to the exhibition will be published just in 10 minutes, as I have said. Uh, so you click on the account, so you click on the exhibition, on Marina's account, you can read the wonderful curatorial text which was prepared for this exhibition. Uh, find out more about Marina's um, art steps. And here you enter the gallery. Marina, please take the lead. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Anastasia. So um, yeah, what you see here uh, is, you also saw in the preview, a lot of aliens. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's... Um, zoom into one of them. So what you see here is actually Alien 52, which is also one of my favorite ones. And the net one next to it, it's um, you might already figured it out. It's inspired 
by um uh how do you call it uh and uh how's it called yeah in German, it's Achterbahn. <laughs> and uh, next to it, you uh, already saw an, an advertisement. Maybe you can quickly go back uh, a second. Sure, to, to this one. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So next next to the alien, you see here some, some advertisements. And those advertisements uh, give you a glimpse into some of the alien stories, but also to other um, art projects I do. So you can always click on here also on the info button to find out more about it. This advertisement here was actually um, uh, referring to Alien 80, which you also see in a moment. And um, yeah, so more aliens, more advertisements. And already here you see in the middle of the three, you see Alien 80, which was the uh, earlier advertisement all about. And um, yeah, if you want to read the story of that one, you just need to click on the info button and then you can also find out what the advertisement is all about. But the aliens cannot just be experienced in 2D, 2D also in 3D. Um, those really cool 3D models were actually created uh, by the very talented um, 3D artist Nate. And um, yeah, with that, we already entered the second corridor with uh, even even more aliens in it. There are aliens which have a story and there are aliens like this one, which don't, don't have a story yet. So here you can then really um, also participate in, in the creation of the stories. So in the exhibition, you find all different kinds of stories, but also, as I said, aliens without it. And those can be um, voted for how the story progresses in the Instagram story and on my Instagram account while the exhibition um, continues. And what the cool thing is about the 3D aliens is that you also see how the aliens are look from 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 the back and uh, from uh, yeah from the fourth you can really see all the angles. So really, um, if you are in that exhibition, have a look um, at all those. What you see here is actually those two aliens you just saw are inspired by my dogs. So you see not all aliens have um, human inspiration. So um, yeah, also if if some of you might want to be the next inspiration of one of those aliens, let me know. Here on the right, you see actually an alien which is inspired by myself. So, so this is um, possible. And uh, with that, I would say we have a closer look to um, the 3D uh, models. So you really see here all the ang angles. And what is also important is that um, all those 3D uh, models are part of something bigger, which is called the Alien Tail Experience, which will be an, a VR experience created by uh, me and three other um, uh, guys. And yeah, if you click on the info button, you can also get more information on that one. And with that, we are already enter or, or in the last corridor. And as you see, um, ah, yeah, here we have another um, advertisement, which also links to Alien 80, which was on the first um, uh, corridor, which you, uh, if you remember. So if you want to know why he knows why they are lying, you can read the story. And then the last um, corridor. And in that exhibition, we show uh, close to, and I actually show 50 different kinds of aliens. So you see they, they all very different because of the, also the inspiration is, is very, very different. And, um, but there's actually more where those came from. So up until now, I think I have around 150 different alien characters created. So yeah. Let me know if you want to be the next one. And with that, I will conclude the, um, the tour. And I really hope you liked it. And I would encourage you to uh, experience it yourself, to explore all the different kinds of stuff, get involved in the voting, <laughs> um, be part of, of, um, yeah, of the creation of those alien stories and 
explore and have a look into um, yeah the the stories about the aliens about the digitized society. Thanks very and much. And also don't forget to use AR function because every artwork <laughs> which you see in Marina's exhibition can be viewed right in your uh, right in your surroundings. You can try it at home. You can try it uh, outdoors or in your office. So every day can be a bit brighter with Marina's alien. And I'm also <laughs> proud that I, uh, Marina has an alien uh, based on me. Um, yeah, so it's definitely a one of a kind experience when you get an alien and it's inspired by you. So you have no idea how come and then you are kind of guessing what was uh, what were the features behind which Marina took. So it was really a pleasure to get such wonderful presents. So I strongly recommend you to, to get an alien from Marina too. Which is also part of the exhibition. Did you find it? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Nice. awesome. And yes, the AR function is great. I recommend anybody who hasn't tried it to um, invite your friend or family to, to place the artwork in AR and to invite your friend or family to uh, come into the shot and take a screenshot in order to, to have cool photos with, with aliens now. And uh, thank you very much, Marina, for the guided tour. It was an amazing opportunity to hear you speak about your exhibition. Um, and with this, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions from myself. Yeah, sure. If I get the chance. And then afterwards, we'll, of course, take the questions that were submitted to us by our audience through the Google form. Um, and we'll have an opportunity for a kind of live Q&A, let's say. But before then, um, I wonder, exhibitions are in some way um, an extension of the creative process, right? It's not just about filling some random uh, space with art. It's uh, an extension of of the of the art itself often the spaces and with with digital spaces we get the opportunity to for the spaces to be li a literal uh, extensions of the art and so with this in mind uh, could you briefly explain to us why you have chosen this specific space for your digital exhibition and anything that went through your head while you were um, kind of giving input on the space that that was uh, that now became your exhibition Yes, sure. Happy to. So um, interactivity is actually an important part of my art. So it's also an important part of this exhibition and also an important part which technology can can bring. Right. So, for example, that means in visitors of this exhibition can actually interact with the alien portraits, as I already mentioned, also in the in the guided tour, you can click on the info button and there you can then find the the story of of that alien. And some of them are already written, some of them aren't. That's also, again, an, an interactivity which um, uh, yeah, opens up for me the possibility to, to have a conversation between me and the viewer. And so this is also, yeah, the, each, each alien in this e exhibition is actually already, as Anastasia mentioned, um, inspired by, by someone or also something. And the alien stories itself explore a world of a digitized society and how it would be to live in such a society. So would it be worse? Would it be better? Or maybe it would just be different. And this thought experiment is also what gave the exhibition, the name, the exploration of a digitized society. So, yeah, this this is why um, also, yeah, technology is is important and interaction, not just between the viewer and the artwork, but also between me and the viewer, which um, right. opens up uh, or this possibility is opened up by by technology. Of course, yes, and that's a big part of what makes technology so appealing as far as art goes. I agree with you very much on this score. And with this in mind, I wonder if you can tell us a little more about the aliens themselves, right? It's a big recurrent theme. And as you say, they're inspired by real people or things. So it's sort of like a medium in itself, like you speak through them, uh, if you like. So I wonder if you could if you could tell us why. Why aliens? What, what, what about them? Uh, yes, yes, sure. So um, th the reason why the aliens are so recurring in my art is that I love working with different kinds of mediums. And that, for example, I love painting with acrylic paint, but I also love drawing on my iPad. And I also enjoy exploring different kinds of technology. So I already mentioned in the beginning, like NFT, NFC, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, machine learning. And 
a, a lot more. And with the aliens, I wanted to create something which allows me to work in whatever medium I want, but still be recognizable. And so the aliens are the constant, which allows me to be flexible in the medium and the technology I choose and still have this one element which holds everything together. And when I started as an artist, I had a really big problem, which was the blank page. Some, some of you might relate. Um, I always knew what, what I wanted to use to create something, but I never knew what I want to create. So, so what do I want to draw? And since I have the aliens, I don't have this problem anymore. So because after a while I discovered that it's more than just drawing those aliens, the aliens allow me to create a world inspired by those alien characters. And how it works is basically um, the aliens are inspired by real or by, by, by people or by, by something, by a place or an event which, which has happened. Um, but this is also then based on those alien characters, I create stories. And those stories are again, in, or the stories are, inspire again the um, artworks I create. One of those artworks you, you see right here, this is actually the house of Neil as it is described in um, the story of, of Neil. So for me, the alien world is an unlimited source of inspiration, which gives me enough flexibility to create whatever I want in whatever medium I want. So yeah, this is why they are recurring. <laughs> Very interesting. Thank, thank you very much for explaining, for sharing this with us, uh, Marina. And I'm glad that that the sort of world that you're creating, populated by these uh, fascinating aliens, uh, was given sort of a partial place uh, at, at this exhibition. Although, of course, we couldn't hope to to show all of it yet. Um, and uh, with this in mind, I'd, I wonder if we can take a step back and uh, talk about the audience, right, from, from the perspective of the audience. Um, digital exhibitions are the not the same as physical ones and uh, one of their defining features is that um, the audience can view them from anywhere right they're always accessible always in their pocket through their smartphone or tablet um, and we'll, probably it is fair to say that most will access this particular exhibition from the comfort of their own home right as opposed to going to a dedicated place uh, such as a gallery or a museum um, and so how do you think this impacts the way your art or generally art uh, is perceived, the fact that it's now uh, moving to inside the homes of its viewers rather than inside dedicated places? Okay, just to be warned, this might get a little bit longer, this answer. <laughs> but because from, I personally believe <laughs> that um, how we perceive art is closely connected with the way how we consume art. and the way art is consumed can be dramatically changed by technology. Suddenly, you don't need to invest so much time anymore at, at once to, to go to a museum or to, to go to a gallery. So visiting a museum often takes hours, right? And after a while, our brains are just filled with so much information. And um, you, you are not, it, to me, it often feels like, and, an information overload. I'm just not able to take all that information in at once. So it can also happen that I miss a lot of information. But for me, art is about inspiring people and to put a, a smile on their face. And this often takes only a matter of seconds. And so after that, the visitor can still decide if he wants to have more information about it or if he maybe needs also a break. So if you feel like a break when exploring my <laughs> um, exhibition here on VRD, um, just go ahead and do something else and let the experience just, just sink in that, that you just had. And if you liked it, then come back another day and explore it even more. I believe that this is the way technology changes the way we consume art and also the way we perceive art. And because a digital exhibition will not be visited for hours, I believe. And, but they might be get visited more often. So, 
and that's also how I designed this exhibition here on 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 V art. It's it's not meant for you to stick around for hours. Of course you can. There's a lot to explore. It can, gives you busy for hours. There's no problem, but um, you you don't need to. You can also just um, yeah. Um, you can also come back as often as you like, and um, you can experience something new each day. And you are also mentioning accessibility, which I believe also has a huge impact on how art is perceived. Because at the moment, most exhibitions are bound to a location, which gives the opportunity also to um, adapt the exhibition to, to your audience. But suddenly the audience is all over the world with different kinds of expectations and also different kinds of understanding of art. And I personally believe that that's a good thing. That's, a, that's actually a really, really great thing. And art should be accessible by everyone um, independently of, of where they live or where they located. That's all, actually also one reason why I'm also an active street artist to bring um, the, art, the art to the people and not the other way around, not force people to go to the art, right? And the last uh, thing is that I think technology changes how, how the artists or the artists get more approachable through technology. Today, artists fly around the world uh, to get um, to know their viewers. And for me, technology allows to have an open and constant dialogue with my viewers. It's also where the interactivity comes again in, into place also of the exhibition. And uh, also in, in that extent that they that the viewers can really have an impact on my art and also actually be part of it themselves as inspiration of the aliens or through their votes on, on how stories progress. And that's what for me new media is all about, about about the community and to create something all together. Wonderful. Uh, thanks very much for this answer. Um, and I definitely agree with you about the point on flexibility of the experience itself. Um, the, 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 there is very little flexibility in seeing in seeing art inside of a gallery or a museum, whereas here, of course, the experience can be tailored to the individual needs of the audience. And I think that's amazing. And so definitely I agree with you very much on this point. Um, but speaking of accessibility, which you already mentioned, um, a little anecdote. I, when I was a kid, um, I was brought to see expressive, uh, expressive, abstract expressionism, Jason Pollock and Mark Rothko and stuff. Um, and while in my personal education, I was still art education, I was still in the point of old master. So I didn't understand it, but had a terrible time. <laughs> um, so with this in mind, there is also intellectual accessibility, right? Um, certain kinds of art require more um, education in order to be understood. So uh, with this in mind, uh, should the viewers prepare somehow or come with a certain frame of mind for this exhibition to have an optimal experience? And generally, is there an ideal way to experience this exhibition? I know you already mentioned that uh, you know the freedom is on the side of the viewers, but anything you would like to elaborate upon would be also appreciated. I, I would suggest to just come with the mindset of an explorer, right? So you can decide, as you mentioned, how deep you want to dive into um, the digitized world of the aliens. And if you are in a hurry, you can just like scroll through or go through all the alien characters, decide which one you like, which you don't like. Um, if you have a little more time, you can also tell me about it. I'm, I'm always happy for, for feedback and always curious um, which ones are more liked than others. Um, but you can also take a step deeper um, in, into the alien world and read their stories. To, to find really uh, to find out about the digitized society and also reflect on it. And also here you can of course read through all of them at once, which might take a while. Um, but you can also read one and come back another day to read others. And it's really up it's really up to you. And also the advertisements which were quickly shown, uh, they also give you clues about the the alien story. So for example, you can also say like, okay, this this sounds mysterious. Uh, this is the alien story I would, would like to um, read or have, have a closer look at. So 
then you can read through it and figure out, okay, how is this advertisement now related to, to the alien? Or there are also other advertisements which give you an idea about other projects I do. So you can also explore a lot more, um, yeah, projects which are connected to the alien uh, aliens. I already mentioned the alien tail experience, which is a, um, yeah, a virtual reality experience. Um, you can also read more about that and explore that one even more. And the last step you can take is basically the one to participate. Um, during the um, exhibition, to the course of exhibition, so um, there will be each day another alien in my, in my Instagram stories where you can vote how the story progresses. And um, so you can really have an influence on on their stories and yeah and so i'm now curious uh, how far you will go as the um yeah as the visitors how far you will come in the exploration awesome it's it's really great it's really amazing how how much opportunity for dialogue as you said there is with with this digital experience and how much it can be tailored to specific people sounds almost like a quest um, <laughs> fascinating adventure okay and with this in mind um i'll stop being so selfish and i'll uh, read out some of the questions that we received on the google form um speaking of uh, uh pollock and rothko what current artists inspire you is one of the it's one of the questions that was uh, that was mentioned. Actually, I'm a lot inspired by street artists, um, all different kinds of street artists, to be honest. But um, yeah, that's where I personally draw a lot of inspiration from. Then another artist which might not come to mind um, when you think about artists, but I'm also a lot. Uh, or my, well, one of my most inspiration is also from games, so from game artists. Um, I play a lot of video games, so this is also where I um, get a lot of, of, of inspiration from. And um, then another artist which inspires me a lot, but is not really current anymore, is um, yeah, indeed Salvador Dali. It always, uh, the, the um, alien, the first alien you saw, Alien 52, with uh, it's, which is also the first um, 3D alien, it is actually inspired by an artwork of Salvador Dali. Very cool, very cool. I also love Salvador Dali, um, although this talk is not about me. Um, uh, <laughs> with this in mind, uh, a related topic. Uh, someone asks, where do you find your inspiration aside from, from the artists that you've mentioned? Yeah, one thing is definitely um, games. And uh, another thing is I also, due to the fact that I also do a lot of street art is that I love to travel. Of course, not at this point of time, <laughs> but uh, hopefully soon again. And um, yeah, there's also from, from different cities. Cities are actually also a, a good source of inspiration for me. Um, it's not just, how they look like it's it's more the vibe you you get from them i i for example love to draw in cafes so corona for me is a huge disappointment in in, in uh, the sense of inspiration because i cannot go to a cafe anymore and draw there and uh, re uh receive all the vibes and um which, which I love, so um, this is also a, a good source of inspiration for me. Very, and, very and of course, yeah, and of course, as I already mentioned, the alien world itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, of course. Speaking of the alien world, um, someone asks uh, if you've already planned a sort of habitat slash environment for the aliens and built a world around them. Uh, I'll add from myself that there's obviously opportunities for this with the new technologies. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And that's also the, the VR, uh, the, sorry, VR, <laughs> virtual reality um, uh, experience, which will uh, come at one point in time, hopefully. Um, this is actually doing that. So there we really create a world around those aliens. So you can, um, of course, find the aliens in, in that world, but you also get a glimpse of how they live 
of how, how, how the digital world looks like. And that's also something, yeah, I, I wanted to also transport into the VR exhibition. So also there with, with, with designs and, and the neon colors and, and all of that. This is also already, um, yeah, a, a part of how the, the world looks like. And also here, with with the artwork this is also also g should give glimpses into the the world the world of the aliens fascinating as a, a truly fascinating the creation of a uh, kind of new ecosystem and world uh amazing um do you have a favorite amongst the aliens somebody asks a tricky tricky question <laughs> um yes i do um uh, Alien 52 is, is, is one of my favorites. Um, also, the one you see here, it's um, inspired by another street artist. He's called uh, Limo. Uh, this is also one of my favorites. And I think this one next to it is Alien 80, which you already saw also in, in, the, um, in the tour. This is also one of my favorites. So I have a lot of favorites. Very cool. Um, with this in mind, uh, we'll, we'll take another question from the Google form. But while we do, I'd like to briefly encourage everyone who is here in the audience with us. If you have any questions, then of course, this is a perfect time to to post them in the chat. And then Maureen, of course, will will do her best to answer them. Um, so the other question that we'd like to take is um, a sort of a more unusual one. What was the one thought that kept spinning in your head while preparing for this exhibition, if there was any such thought. Oh, that's that's a tough one. Um, I think it was not one thought, it was actually many. And uh, I think I already mentioned some of them. So interactivity was was a really important one for me. I really wanted to um, create something which is interactive. Because it's it's not just to to look at the aliens. It's also about, yeah, interacting with them, deciding which one you like, which you don't like, uh, um, introducing um, them with 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 their story, so that you can really get to know them as as a character. And um, this was pretty in, uh, important for me while creating them. And I also wanted to, yeah, have have a focus with, with the aliens, but also, um, yeah, give, have people explore it, have, have people the opportunity for people to explore it. So that, so not everything is like, um, so obvious, maybe some, some things need to be discovered, like, um, yeah, like, like, uh, voting and, um, all of that and also the, the, the story. So, there is some work to do on the side of the viewer, but I think it's it's totally worth it, and you should definitely try it out. Yes, absolutely. And and, and, and this connects with... uh, to the side of the viewer. I'm happy to announce that just like two minutes ago, we opened the exhibition, so now it's on air <laughs> on the VR application, and I would gladly share the link in this chat so uh, the visitors which are here in Zoom and also watching us on Facebook will be the first one to try out as we are continuing our artist talk. So please take a look at the link in the chat. Awesome. Perfect, thank you. Awesome. Um, you mentioned that uh, street art is a big inspiration. Um, and so one of the um, kind of features of, let's say, street art is that it's very, mm, it comments a lot socially, it has a lot of social commentary in it. Um, I wonder if that's something that resonates with you. I wonder if you do any of that in your art. I wonder if there are any aspects from street art, uh, the, what makes street art so fascinating that we could transfer to the digital. Really cool question. Um, so I personally try not to, I'm not a very politic person. <laughs> So I, I try not to comment on that too, too much. Um, but yes, there's some meaning of, of, of it all, of course. So also um, with the aliens, I want to um, yeah, make aware of some 
things like um, I personally believe that in the set in, in the center of it all, we we are all the same. So we might look a little different, um, each person of us, but um, basically we we are the same. We have the same problems. We have uh, different stories, of course, but um, yeah, in, in in the center of it all, we are the same. And that's also why all those aliens have the same colors um, to to yeah f po point that fact out. It's it's really the, the the colors do not change anything of of, of that. So there are some comments <laughs> on on uh, like community and that in in the aliens, but um, it's not that I point them out uh, so drastically as as a lot of street artists do. And also politically, um, uh, I'm I'm not as invested. <laughs> um as some some street artists but also the stories i mean the stories explore as i mentioned the digitized society so it's really a thought experiment on on how technology can help us and how technology can make our lives better i think science fiction movies and uh, tv shows already painted a really good picture how technology will destroy us at one point in time. Um, so with this, I really want to also figure out, OK, is, is there maybe also good things that can happen uh, with technology? And and is that, um, yeah, is that, is that really always bad? Or is maybe also some of it good? Or is it in the end only received as bad, but, def but actually it's just different? So there's also some 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 social commentary, of course, in this one. And I also um, in the stories have some um, yeah social commentary. For example, uh, yeah, one of the stories are actually all written in um, in the form of of they. So not he, not she. It's just they to also make people aware that not every human being identifies itself as, as a male or a female. And um, so there are some social commentary. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say figure it out for yourself and, and read the stories. Cool. Um, cool. Thanks very much. Uh, a very diplomatic re response, if I may say. Um, what, uh, the, uh, another question, perhaps the final one that I'd like to ask is, um, about the digitization itself that you comment upon. So uh, one trend that exists among digital artists is that they sort of help everybody make sense of this digitization that's happening through digital means by commenting on what digitization brings. And that's in fact what you mentioned uh, now uh, as one of your sort of goals and the things that you do in your art. So I wonder if to uh, close the questionnaire off, uh, you could tell us why. why why digitization? What 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 interests you about the digital world? And uh, yes. Okay, maybe for that I need to uh, say that um, I'm a user experience designer by by day, um, so artist only <laughs> by night, <laughs> at least at the moment. So um, and yeah, with with that I also in in my daily uh, routine I have a lot of um, yeah knowledge and interaction with technology. So this is what fascinates me. And this also, I, I personally believe that technology really can make our lives better. And we just did not figure it all out yet. So this, this is what I want to try to do with my art and also to try to do as a user experience designer, right? So I, I really try to help people interact with technology and um, yeah, in the in, in my art, I really try to to figure out okay what 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 technology, how can technology better our lives? And this is the reason why why for me technology it's something which fascinates me because I just think it has so much possibility which is not figured out yet. Thanks very much. I think that's that's a very inspiring um, note to to close this artist talk. 
uh, with. And uh, with this, uh, the only thing that I have to add is once again, congratulations. And thanks very much for giving us the opportunity of hosting your exhibition. And of course, I encourage everybody in our audience to go and create your own story with this exhibition. Thank you so much. Uh, so if we have any questions from just from the audience, that's exactly the time to ask. So I see one in the chat. So Marina, do you work on any projects which are not a part of the exhibition? Um, yes, of course. So um, there is, uh, you, you see it maybe here. This is it's one sticker of mine. Um, they are actually equipped with an NFC token. So also if you see an alien sticker on the streets, you can interact with them um, via NFC. And at the moment I am um, working on extending that so that it's because not everyone knows NFC. <laughs> and um, we are, uh, or I'm currently working on a PWA, which you can just um, then download from, from the website. So from did you find my sticker.com. And then you can interact with it by, um, and it recognizes the image. So you just scan the sticker and um, then you get the story of that alien shown directly on your smartphone. Uh, smartphone, sorry. And um, yeah, this is this is one project uh, I am I am working on. Uh, yeah, right now. And that this also works with with then those uh, the the prints. And also another thing I am working on is with with the artworks here. These are also available as augmented reality artworks. So if you scan um, this artwork with with the uh, with an app, it's called uh, Art Artwife. Um, then you uh, can also see how how the cl clouds are moving around. So it's 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 simple animation, but that's also what I personally like. So it's it's just a moving image. So it's not, it's not everything is animated. Um, it's we're just moving one one thing, which gives it a little um, more perspective and tells uh, a little more about it. Do we have more questions? Uh, no, we have just one question okay. for now. So we are waiting for a couple of more seconds. Maybe somebody is exactly typing in the <laughs> Okay, good. No problem. So if you have any questions, please also feel free to unmute yourself or write them in the chat, write them on Facebook as you wish. And while maybe somebody is getting ready with a question, I'm glad to say that we will also publish an interview with Marina today. The interview was uh, recorded in uh, August last year. So it's a bit, I would say it's a bit already, it's like 10 months past. So sorry, no, nine months past after the interview was taken. But so uh, it covers exactly the topics of digitalization, of working with both digital and street art. So about Marina's uh, art story. So I think that it will be also out of interest for you if uh, you have been here the whole time with us. Yes, thank you. It was quite so, fun. Huge thanks to everybody. <laughs> yeah, who participated. Yeah, um, I'm also personally very glad that we that we are holding this exhibition because I also feel a bit connected, uh, not only to my alien but also <laughs> to all of them which we have there. Uh, and I hope that it's not the last exhibition which we have with Marina. So, the next generations of aliens or maybe some other projects are also to come. Uh, and of course, I encourage you to create more and to follow Marina on Instagram, on Facebook, because she's regularly doing the wonderful stories with votings on the aliens. And we are soon to announce a web version of the Marina's exhibition, which is also a wonderful experience to get. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you as well. Thanks for taking your time and listen to my stories. <laughs> And yeah, definitely have a look into the exhibition. And as I said, I'm always happy to receive feedback. So get in contact with me anytime. I'm happy to answer all your questions, even if uh, you have no, no now, maybe they come later. <laughs>
Yeah. Good. So have a great day. See you.